Okay. Kucher off for Hart. Let's go. Okay. You go, guys see it. Go Bolts. I didn't expect to go Bolts immediately, but we No, no go Bolts. I got the Panthers. I got the Panthers in six games, but I want Coach for Hart. Tampa sent me this team. I got to uh, okay. quick uh, Okay. <laughs> you son of so, a bitch. So, so you go for Coach, you got the Panthers, and then obviously the Maple Leafs still yep. one in Boston. You're riding high right now. It's a good uh, it's a good Tuesday for PK Subban. Oh, look at this. Bright and sunny day out in Bristol, Connecticut. Couldn't ask for anything better than this. I did find a spot. Thank you. I'm live. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, PK, let's talk about what you're live to talk about, which is hockey. An incredible night last night in the NBA. Incredible night in the NHL. Let's start in the Boston barn. Obviously, this is the year that we assume the Boston Bruins are going to go on and win Lord Stanley Cup. They bring in Patty Maroon, a man who has three Stanley Cups, maybe beefing up the fourth line a little bit. Add a little attitude and a little bit of championship pedigree and then all of a sudden they're losing to the Toronto Maple Leafs at home the Toronto Maple Leafs who have never beat the Bruins in the playoffs since like 1950 or 1960 something are we worried about the Bruins and when you see Austin Matthews cook like that Ooh. does that make you think maybe back in Toronto the Boston Bruins are going to be cooked what did you learn last night and what are your thoughts on this series going forward well, I picked I picked the Bruins in six games, so everybody there, you guys can relax. I did pick the Bruins Thank in six you. games. I didn't expect this to be four straight for the Bruins. But I will say this. Last night, little bump oh. in the road. They have to get the hate back in their game, that desperation. Do not let the Toronto Maple Leafs off the hook. They let them off the hook last night. Too many penalties. Stay out of the box. It doesn't allow you to play them five on five. You got to play Toronto five on five. And a guy like Patrick Maroon, you bring him in so that five on five, he can play physical, get down low, cycle the puck, grind down their defense. Like Boston's got to attack Toronto's defense. That defense is thin. You got Labushkin, the list goes on and on. All of those guys, there's no studs back there. Morgan Riley is their best D-man. But listen, you can expose them. Get in on the forecheck. Make them play 200 feet away from your net, and they'll be fine. Big night last night for Pablo, though, huh? Uh, I believe uh, another nickname is Poppy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Big Poppy. Yeah. Poppy wow. Chulo. I don't know what they're calling him down there, but I'll tell you this. I said it yesterday. When the, when the lights come on, and Pat, you know this in professional sports. At the end of the day, in playoff time, when those bright lights come on, the stars got to come out. And listen, he showed up in a big way last night. I'm not going to take anything away from him because he led, he stepped up, scored a huge goal for them. But Max Domi, listen to me. I, I told there was a tweet that I sent out in early October that Sheldon Keith uh, you know, had too much skill in their top six. He needed some sandpaper and grit. Listen, look at Connor McDavid and Zach Hyman, who had 50 goals this year. He's playing with Connor McDavid. He's a sandpaper guy. They bring Max Domi up. They bring him up late in the season, and it's paying dividends right now. So, you know, uh, both of those guys I thought were highly impactful for Toronto up front, but make no doubt about it. Austin Matthews, a bona fide stud, and this guy's a playoff performer now. We have to start recognizing him as that. That's a huge goal on the road at TD Garden. Yeah, it's Toronto loves it. electrifying. I mean, yeah. and then celebrate the way it just so such an athletic goal as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, nice. it looked like it looked like Brady to Gronk there that lob pass. Oh, oh. down the middle, down the scene. Brady to Grizzop. Yeah, I think oh. so. It, it, you know, on skates, obviously, you have to be able to balance, and the dexterity is absurd if you're able to do that. But <laughs> to put it in stride, pretty much. Yeah, and then Deke, Ched. Oh no, nasty finish. Well, here's, well, the way I look at it is Austin Matthews and the best players in the world. McDavid, you can throw him in that group. They can do things, everything at top speed. Most players got to slow down. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, he just he cooked the oh, my. I mean, he yes. just cooked he him right cooked there. everybody. Yeah, that was. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. Hockey's been showing up, staying with that game. Yeah, uh, I feel like last night, PK, was probably the first time maybe in the history of Boston Bruins hockey that even the fans looked at, you know, Bieber's boy and said, hey, you know, what hats off to you that's a great game you played fantastic but looking at Olmark and Swayman how do you decide Bieber's boy another one of his nicknames Austin Matthews sorry we're listing nicknames Bieber's boy no, I, I, I just learned a Pablo and Papa oh yeah I thought he was just Austin with an O mm, that's yeah, why yeah. I thought he was always I thought they called one. him O Oh, you say, hey, that yo. oh that, that, that'd be a cool name I mean I guess he's putting it through the O's Poppy of the goalies Chulo. Poppy Chulo is that I what like you, Poppy Chulo is that what you call him mm. Well, I mix it up. I got a few nicknames for him. Big Poppy, Poppy, Poppy Chulo. I mean, I, I use all three. Do you, and when you walk up to him, you just say with a straight face, Poppy Chulo. 
What's going on? Is that at how- the All Star game? At the All Star game, I asked him which one, and he just kind of laughed and giggled at me, and he said, "PK, do whatever you want." And I said, "Okay, well, fine. If you're gonna give me, if you're gonna give me, uh, you know, Green whiteboard, light. you're gonna give me an empty canvas. Trust me, I'll come up with a few more for him. He keeps playing like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. excited to hear what comes out of PK's brain for old Poppy Chulo Bieber's boy. Yeah, right? hopefully he doesn't keep playing like that. But looking at the goalie situation for Boston, is this? kind of just one of those things where they're just going to go every other game no matter what because Olmark going into the game I know a lot of Bruins fans were nervous felt like he played fantastic and then on the other side PK what's going on with uh, Nylander what's the situation there because everyone's up in arms that he's not playing and I know I'm hoping that he doesn't play well, listen, Willie Nylander is a massive part of the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's why they signed him to that much dough and that much term. Because when you look at it, they got Tavares on a long term, Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, Morgan Riley. They got a lot of cap space tied up, but they're heavy. The big four is what they build their team around. So you take one of those guys out of the mix, they lose significant depth. Now, the question still remains on whether this is how you should be building a team nowadays in the National Hockey League. You look at Vegas and the six success that they've had they don't have that much money tied up in just four guys so but Willie Nylander is he was probably outside of Austin Matthews their best forward all season so to miss him and the skill set that he brings five on five you're gonna have to score goals because teams are good on the penalty kill they're watching scouting reports you know you, you gotta be able to put pressure on teams five on five and Willie Nylander does that I have no idea where he is No idea where he is. I don't know what happened. Like, what happened since game 82? For him to play all the games and then not be able to play in that first game. What could it be? What could it be? Like, drama? Uh, Injury? What what, what is? What happens in hockey? Well, listen, I'm not one to speculate, okay? I don't Mm -hmm. like people coming out and speculating that it could be this and could be that. I hated that as a player. Um, Let's get down to the truth of it. Something may have happened in the last game. Maybe something was ailing him and it got worse. But once again, I'm going to go back to this. Why the hell was he playing? Like, let's just say it was that. Let's just say something was ailing him. Why are you playing in that last game? And then what the hell happened between game 82 and game one? If that wasn't it, what happened there? So um, might I have been think walking a the dog. Maple yeah. Leafs, might have been walking a dog. Because the, the Maple Leafs, Mark said that they went back, watched the entire 82 game or the 82nd game, and they were like, there's no, there's no portion of this game where it felt like he might have tweaked something or something along those lines. Mm. Has this happened well, before in it's hockey? Been, it's a bit of gone, it's a bit of a gong show in Toronto with the media and the coach. I don't think he handles the media correctly in Toronto. If you want my real opinion on it, I don't think he handles it well, and that's just my opinion. That doesn't mean that You're it's correct, wrong the way he can. handles it. That's just my opinion. I don't think he handles it well, and who knows? I don't know. Players get into it with coaches all the time. I'm not going to speculate that. But what I do need to say is this. The Toronto Maple Leafs, there's no excuses. I ain't giving them any excuses. You still got Tavares, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner. You guys went out. You say you're Stanley Cup contenders. You should be able to beat the Boston Bruins then in the first round without Willie Nylander. So I don't want to hear it. They got it done last night. Like, sack up, grab your sack, and go out there and get it done. And you know what? When, when it comes down to it and it's crunch time, you need your star players to step up, and Austin Matthews did that last night. But they, there's a lot of hockey left to be played, and uh, I want to see. If Willie Nylander's not in for game three, like, I, I want to hear what Sheldon Keith's going to say about it. If he's going to miss three games and he played game 82, what's the explanation for Yeah, it? none of it makes sense. I mean, everybody's seemingly asking the same questions around the it's hockey nuts. world. Because how good of a player he is. and Yeah, I mean... A bit of a gong show is a great way to yeah. describe something. Yeah. I mean, Where you got your point across. Willie? You got your point across completely yeah. by describing something as a gong show. And uh, I want to. It's a gong show over there. Is that a Canadian thing? You guys describe stuff as gong shows in Canada, or is that a PK thing? Yeah, no, gong, gong show. show. You Canadians yeah, are awesome. Just, Canadian? Sheldon, Sheldon Keith is a. Uh, he, he's not great. Okay, so he's a bit of a gong show with the media. Like. Yeah, he just they lost. What they lose to the Bruins in Game One. Five one. They asked him about the injury. He's laughing in the media's face. It's like probably have something well, better there. And that's my problem. That's listen to me. That's oh, my glasses problem. are off. Oh, glasses okay. are off in it's Bristol. Original, oh, hold on, hold on. It's an original six team. I grew up in Toronto. Okay, like as much as I played for the Montreal Canadiens, was drafted there. I grew up in Toronto. So as much as there was hate towards the Toronto Maple Leafs when I played. Like, my mom, my mom is a huge Leafs fan. She texted me last night. She's like, aha, suck it. The Leafs won. Like, that's – so I grew up in that environment. I got respect for the organization. 
So when it comes to managing the media, there's got to be more respect for the fan base that you're talking to people that are educated about the game. And we're not idiots. So you got to be able to handle that. That's why I think the original six franchises, you got to have the right leadership there. And by the way, it's not just off the ice. It's on the ice, too. Like, we're seeing it translate on the ice. And that's where my frustration is. So, you know, we can spend all day getting into it, Pat. I'm getting swollen in the chest. Yep. I got a hoodie on. I'm yep. getting hot. Yep. I'm getting real hot. But, I, you know, I'm not... I'm not the biggest fan of the Leafs and the way they do things. Well, every once in a while, an organization will put you in the oven, especially mm -hmm. whenever you start getting a little cooked up. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Cooch cooking. All right. <laughs> All right. Ty's got a question for you. Yeah, PK, another game last night, Golden Knights and Stars. Uh, we had Steve Levy on the other day, and he basically said, hey, this is going to be war on ice. And it kind of was. A lot of people bitching, you know, with Vegas putting Stoner on LITR. He comes back. Pots one right away, and then the guys they were able to get because he was on LITR. Hannafin has two assists. Uh, Hurdle scores a goal. How do you see that series kind of playing out, and how important in a, in a series like this is it to get that first game? And also, why do the Golden Knights seem to kind of have Otter's number? He's been so hot going into this, but it seems like for whatever reason, uh, the Golden Knights just know how to beat him. Well, for any Dallas fan that's complaining about anything – you shouldn't be complaining about anything because last night you had an opportunity to win game one on home ice. Thompson was letting everything but be, like beach balls in he from was. left, right, and center, and they couldn't capitalize on it. So, you know, listen, there's still the game within the game. I don't care how your roster looks. You still got to go out and play, right? You still got to go out and execute. And Vegas... For me, uh, you know what? They did everything within the rules. So you can't – listen, whether it's his spleen, his back, I'm going to tell you, last year people had an issue with it. I've had back injuries in my career. Nobody's figured out backs. You can put surgery. You Football can do hasn't either. No one's figured them out. Exactly. No one's figured them out. So you, you can't sit here and tell me that the, the player's not injured or he's faking it or whatever. That's – that's insane. You can't say that in a contact sport. I mean, this is the toughest sport. I think Mark Stone's proven that he's pretty tough yeah. and that he's a winner and he's a gamer. So you can't do that. And Vegas, listen, they, they utilized the system. They brought in the right players. Listen, you can free up the cap space and bring in the wrong players too. So you got to give that, you got to give their organization credit for how they've continued to make this team better year in and year out. Yeah, they go out and make their organization yeah. but, better. To answer your question, Dallas last night, I thought played a very good game. I thought they played a really good game. Way to go. Right Texas, down to the Texas hockey, way to no, go. They played great. They Way played go. great. And you know what? Great. But I look if I look on the other side, Vegas didn't play the best game. Oh. Thompson uh -oh. did not play his best game. Oh, no. And there was a two minute drill. Like you know how Tom Brady gets at the end of the game, two minutes on the clock, and he dr drives it down the field. Yeah. Two minute drill for the Vegas Golden Knights, not focused on anything but playing defense. And if Dallas Stars are your pick to win the Stanley Cup, <laughs> they had two minutes, two minutes without a goalie, six on five, and they couldn't score. Vegas held strong, mm. and to me, that was a definitive moment. I can't believe that Locked Vegas on. is the favorite to win the Cup. It's nuts to me. I know, PK. Nuts. Locked on. You ever, seen, you ever seen a penalty called 20 seconds into a playoff series, PK? Oh, that was interesting. Oh, dumps, That's dumps. an interesting start oh, to a series. Oh, yeah, you ever seen NBA that? Refs, you ever NHL seen refs, that before, PK? PK? Refs. Classic sports. Listen, I'm, Classic not getting sports. In, I'm not getting into the officiating. I watched the Rangers game the other night, and Rempe bumps a guy, and he gets called 10 seconds into it. The ref's got to set the tone, and I don't want to hear players complaining about the officiating. It's a 60-minute game. You're going to get your call sometimes. You're not going to get them the other time. you got to figure oh, it out. I had to give you one early. Yep. That we've, we have refs mic'd up. The NHL refs are the best. They understand, like, flow of game and, like, I don't want to say make yep. – you, you seem to – I saw your head kind of, <laughs> kind of turn like that, but I appreciate the fact that the NHL refs have like brains and like a feel of the game. And I think there was yes. a mic'd up one last year, like two years ago, where the ref actually said, sorry, we had to give you one early yep. because of what happened or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the, every player was like, all right, yeah, sucks, but we understand it. It kind of happens. It's a, it's an interesting game because a, a penalty is a very big advantage Huge. in hockey. So if they feel like they Huge. mess it up, there is like a potential get back on the other side, which I respect as a sports fan. Personally, I do respect the way it operates. Yeah, and you know what? The influence is different depending on what teams you're looking at. Listen, you give Tampa Bay some extra power plays, 
They're going to make you pay. Best power play in the league, right? But you give Boston, listen, Toronto might take some more liberties of Boston because their power play's kind of been like this. Crop. Right? So, oh, yeah. So you're going to see it. You're going to see it mm, vary from second. different series where teams are going to have to put more of an emphasis on when to be disciplined and when not to be. I wouldn't want to be putting the Rangers and Tampa on the power play extra time. But if I'm Toronto, Listen, Max Domi, you, I'd take a run. At, I'd grab a pound of flesh with Brandon Carlo, you know, and take my two minutes. It, it might be worth it. Patty Maroon's going to be on Just the other side. Yeah, I had a power play yeah, goal Maroon's last well, night. But, yep. yeah. Well, he, you know, we're not talking about. It. Let's talk about tonight. Let's talk about tonight. You talk about that Caps Rangers game with Rempe getting a penalty ten seconds in. Tom Wilson obviously doing Tom Wilson stuff. Yeah. How is? That, are we going to see those two go at it at, at some point? And then we saw the Reeves and Patty Maroon last night. Is this is this all bubbling, brewing? Especially in these best of seven series is sports. Man, I don't know how, especially hockey, with mm-hmm. how much you're hitting each other, how one game doesn't lead into the next game emotionally or how you personally feel about somebody, let alone if it's being hyped up as you two are the dogs. It's like, Rempy Tom, we're staring that down inevitably, and how do you feel about the other games happening tonight, what we should be looking for? Well, I'm going to say specifically to the Rangers in Washington um, because, uh, you know, obviously this is a huge game, a pivotal game for Washington Washington is in a real tough spot. They got, I think, six rookies in there. They got some regulars out of the lineup. They don't have much depth. But what they do have is a great coach in Spencer Carberry, who who should be up for coach of the year, in my opinion. And I'm sure he's going to make some adjustments to try to slow the Rangers down. Washington can't stop hitting. You got to establish the four check. And, you know, for me, that is so important, and you're going to hear me say that a lot throughout the playoffs. you got to wear teams down, and the only way to create mistakes is by putting pressure on. you got to apply major pressure, and the issue is right now is that Washington can't get out of their own zone. They're missing some regular defense, and you can't turn anything into offense if you don't start with your breakout. Everything starts in your own zone. you got to come out with possession. you got to get the puck. Three-quarter ice game. Peter Laviolette, the coach of the Rangers, I played for him in Nashville. Oui, oui. I know exactly what he's saying to the Rangers. That puck, once you get to their blue line, it's got to be in deep. We're not giving them any freebies. They're going to have to come 200 feet to score. So what I'm saying with Washington, they got to get back, support on the breakout, get some flow, and manage the puck through the neutral zone. That's Easy. the only way. And I'm going to tell you something That's right win. now. That's all. That's Tom hockey. Wilson... Mm-hmm. Tom Wilson is going to, I'm going to, I bet this right now, he's going to be a whole lot more physical today. Okay. So, you know what? Is there a chance? Yes, I'd be watching for sure he and Rempe go. Rempe, a goal last game, that fourth Woo! line, Jimmy Vesey, goal and an assist. Barkley Goudreau, two assists. Mm-hmm. So that fourth line had an impact. I'm sure they're going to want to rectify that today. I mean, Rempe, Rempe throws balls around, and there's a little scrum at the end of a period, and Rempe didn't see it. He turned around and immediately just grabbed the guy, and the guy saw him. Guys, they're calling him Matt Rempire in New York. Yeah, right? Rempire State the Rempire State of mind. And he's got yeah, a Rempire exactly. touch as well. I mean, it was so natural, that goal. It's also tonight, uh, Lightning Panthers, Avs, Jets. Winnipeg going to be doing uh, – it's going to be uh, Bananas Barn again, I assume. Must watch. Look out. I mean, 13 goals, I think it was, in their game. Yeah. It's unbelievable. That's a series to watch. Uh, for me, Winnipeg, what makes them great, and it's a quick snippet, they got four lines, and they're rolling all four lines. So I expect them to be fresh, but look out for Kyle Connor. That guy, oh. I really believe this is like a coming out party for him, not as a player, because we've all known about this guy. Yeah. But I think, I that, I think that their team, know. exactly, Let he's coming know. out. Winnipeg's winning. I need Florida to elevate the physicality against Tampa. Against. Enough with the soft. Yes, exactly. Against. I need them to get on the body. Leave Kucherov alone. That's my boy. But get on everybody else. Stamkos, too. That's my guy. But but Florida's got to get physical. This is a big, big game. Uh, big win for them. They got to take care of home ice. You don't want to be going back to Tampa with a split, especially with Vasilevsky kicking them at the other end. Vasilevsky played really well. Florida's got to get the puck up. He's taking away the lower part of the ice. Elevate the puck. Go upstairs, right where Mama Subban keeps the peanut butter. Oh, right there the and gym, a crunchy right peanut butter up there. You know, hey, you want to talk about loud barns in the best home ice in oh, the man. league currently? I'm on the team. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, 
snap. We, we got, got it. There. Oh, snap. Yeah, I couldn't tell you where Winnipeg was 48 hours ago on a map, <laughs> but now it's a place that I think everybody's going to want to watch tonight. Look at that arena. It was like that for the entirety mm-hmm. of the game. Yeah. They're on again tonight. They're home dogs with this potential atmosphere Ooh. there. This Winnipeg team might be, hey, it might be the time to hop on the jet. That's flying up in Canada near North Dakota and Minnesota, from mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. understanding yeah. from really geography. Pat, Pat, I have never been booed louder in arena than at the MTS Center in Winnipeg. Like I that. played that's I played point. against the Manitoba Moose. I played 77 uh, games in the moose? AHL when I was 19 and 20. Yeah, we pl- I played against the Moose. I played for Hamilton. They hated me then, and the hate only built throughout my career. We played Winnipeg in the playoffs, and I love mm. scoring in that building. But what a great barn. Uh, these fans got to show up in the regular season, but they're showing up in the playoffs. It's one of the best places to play. It's going to be electric.